Hey fam. So yeah, I've definitely talked about this book to some degree with y'all on this channel so far, but I finally just actually finished reading it. And I wasn't going to, but I decided I'm going to actually go ahead and give you guys a full review on this book here, The Lady of the Rivers by Philippa Gregory. Um, and the reason I decided to go ahead and do a review on this is because I think there's like maybe one review that I have personally seen on YouTube specifically about this book, and I feel like it deserves more. <laughs> so I wanted to kind of talk to you guys today about what I appreciated about this book and maybe a few things that I didn't, but overall, why I would recommend this for you guys to read. Let's go. Alright fam, so let's get into this. The Lady of the Rivers is the first book in the Cousins War series by Philippa Gregory. Um, I do think that since she did not write this one first, a lot of people seem to either skip it unintentionally or intentionally thinking they don't really need to read it because most people start with The White Queen, which I believe was the first one in the Cousins War series that Philippa Gregory wrote. Um, that being said, if you are a fan of Philippa Gregory, if you're a fan of the Tudor series that she wrote, or if you've read any of the other books in this series, I very highly recommend reading this one. I myself almost skipped it. Um, I wasn't sure I even felt like getting into it, and I will, to be completely honest, the first good portion of the book is a kind of a hodgepodge of I'm really intrigued and can't stop turning the pages because I want to know what's going on, um, and some sloggy, a little bit of slow, a little maybe too much info dumping, um, or just too slow of pace, um, but that's really during some of Jaquetta's younger years, and I think a lot of that could just have to do with the fact that we only know so much about Jaquetta. Right? Um, it's not like she was in the forefront of history. However, what makes this book really, really interesting, at least in my opinion, is the, the people that she knew in her life, as well as her own personal courage. Um, being a woman in the time period that she grew up in, obviously, especially this woman being accused of witchcraft twice in her life, um, being like known to descend from a line that was said to to descend from the goddess Melusina. It's like a mermaid goddess, essentially, right? So there's a lot of um, very traditional witchy kind of magic that goes on in here that does relate to the river, the waters, like the ocean itself. Um, that's actually what made me fall in love with the White Queen when I originally read that years ago. And I do plan on rereading that again soon because it has been a hot minute. And this really... Reading this one really made me just like miss the adventure that I had with the White Queen when I read that because Jaquetta is even witchier than her own daughter was. I will say also she's not as spiteful or kind of vengeful as Elizabeth Woodville is written in the White Queen. Um, that is one of my other kind of complaints. Like Jaquetta is a really interesting character and you can see her age up through the story. Like, she definitely gets smarter. And there is a very specific moment near, actually very close to the end of the book, um, or where she chooses to end, even though Jaquetta doesn't die in this novel. Um, there is a specific moment that I'm like, oh, she just, like, leveled up. She just became the Jaquetta I remember from The White Queen. Um, but that doesn't happen for quite some time. And there, there's a huge portion of the book where she feels a little like she's a cool character. I like following her. She's really interesting and she's intelligent um, in the way that she operates and talks to people and things like that. But um, she just, it doesn't seem like she grows a whole lot. Uh, she doesn't start in a place of being kind of an idiot. She's just a little young and naive. Um, I don't know. I hope I'm making that clear. But regardless of all that, I feel like that would have bothered me more if she was not a fun character to follow, but I actually really, really like her because of her intelligence, because of her witchiness, um, because I could see myself responding in similar ways that she does, but also because she is freaking brave. Um, I think she was like 
14 or so, maybe, she might have actually been older, I honestly don't remember, it's kind of a long book and it goes through a lot of history, but she was pretty young when she got married to her first husband, um, who was the Duke of Bedford, and I don't remember his actual name right now, but um, by that marriage she became the, the aunt to Henry VI. I believe it was his aunt, <laughs> through marriage. Um, and that was when she was quite young. Um, and I do really like how, I really like Gregory's take on this. I want to do more research on my own, but again, it's, Jaquetta Woodville is, we don't know a lot about her. But I feel like for what we do know about her, what we could have guessed about her, I feel like Philippa Gregory did a really good job. I really appreciated it. This book actually starts off with... Uh, the first like couple it's not really chapters because if you've read anything by Philippa Gregory it's more like this is where we are and this is the year that we're in right when this is going down but for the first few chapters I would say in the book um, we are following Jaquetta when she is like very very young teenager and she met Joan of Arc and was according to the story don't quote me I don't know about the real history but according to the book she was there when Joan of Arc was burnt at the stake, um, and she actually had known her, like, interacted with her at certain points. Um, I really loved, like, that was so interesting, her, uh, her communication with her. I thought that was a really interesting way to start this book, too, especially being that not many people know anything about Jaquetta Woodville, um, so it's kind of like, why pick up this book, or what, what's going to keep me going, and so it's like, oh, Joan of Arc. You know, everyone knows who that is. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciated that. Uh, I will say, like, maybe the first, first, not quite half of the book was a little bit slower to get through because it was that pace of, like, really fast, like, page turning and then, like, kind of slow down and, like, just her day-to-day -day life. Um, but then when she, you know, getting into some spoilers here maybe, but... Some of the decisions this chick made in her life, I absolutely, again, very courageous. After her first husband dies, she ends up marrying his squire for love. So she marries far beneath her, and she does that just for love. It's very fairy tale vibe in that way. So a lot of like her earlier life does have that kind of fairy tale vibe. Uh, her first husband did not marry her for for producing heirs. He had already been married before his wife died, and so I don't want to give it away everything in this book. I do want people to read it, but the reason that he married her I found really interesting, um, and it did make it kind of more romantic in a certain way when her and her first husband's squire um, actually started getting to be together after he passed. Um, their whole love story was just like continuous through the entire thing, but it did not really overly focus on it. Um, so if you're a romance person, I'm not saying this is not like a historical romance, but it definitely is a really romantic story. And given the fact that that actually happened is pretty cool. Little Cinderella-esque um, vibes, kind, not as much as her daughter in The White Queen, but still has that very like romantic kind of energy to it, which I think is also very poetic given that they are descendants from a mermaid goddess. <laughs> um, and that apparently is also based in history too. Obviously not the mermaid thing, but that is what was said about her family line. Um, so that's something else I want to look into because that's really, really interesting to me. And people back in the day actually believed that stuff to be like 100% true. So yeah. Um, but yeah, aside from that, some other things that I really appreciated in this is, uh, it's been a while since I read a Philippa Gregory novel myself, even though I do really like her. Um, so I kind of had forgotten what her world building style is like, and I feel like she does a really good job of it. Um, every now and then it does slow down a bit, but for the most part, she's really good at incorporating, uh, at least in my opinion, she's really good at incorporating, like, Here's a little bit of like what's going on right now because there's so much going on at this time period, right? So here's what's going on and then here's like actual story going on to tell that. And she does as much as she can through dialogue or letters or whatever, <coughs> but I think that she does a really good job of um, keeping it 
but keeping you focused, keeping you pulled in, keeping you interested. Um, but every now and then it does sound a little bit like you're reading a bit of a history book. Um, but it, it, it's really not bad. A few other things that I really, really appreciated about this is the portrayal of, first, of just the time period alone. I have never read a book uh, that goes over the beginning of the Wars of the Roses. Um, so that was really interesting. I also didn't know as much. I, I like to research as I read historical fiction. Um, and so that's kind of what I've been doing, um, over this time period as I've been going through and reading the, the fictional work. And I do want to read more about it. Um, but from what I've been picking up, like how all of this got started, uh, the, Ill the mysterious mental illness of Henry the sixth and how Marguerite of Anjou came in and like why she became known as the she wolf and all of these things. It's just like, Oh, it's so interesting it, that literally the political intrigue and what was going on is what made me speed through. Like basically like the second half of this book I read so fast and it's a little over 500 pages, but as you can see, Oh, it's but as you can see, if you can see, um, it's pretty dense. So uh, it did take me a bit longer to get through than usual because I only have so much time to read. But oh my god, you guys, it was so good. It was so interesting. I was so intrigued and I loved how she wove, how Gregory wove the magic of Jaquetta into not just her own, like, story here, like the, the foretelling, uh, you know, with Jaquetta's witchiness and her intuitive powers and all of this, how the things that she sees in the very beginning portions of the book do come to pass and how they come to pass in her life. Um, and the things that are kind of like, um, like leading up to what will happen in the white queen. Like, oh, oh my God, you guys, it got me so excited to reread the white queen. I've read the white queen. It's been a hot minute. Um, but I have only read a portion of the red queen, which is about Margaret Beaufort. And so I've kind of been thinking, and I feel like they both go over the same time period, but from very different perspectives and they're very different women. So part of me has been toying with the idea of maybe reading the white queen and the red queen together. Like, throughout the years or whatever, just swapping back and forth. Um, so I don't know. I might do that. I might get sucked really hard into one of them at a time. I don't even know, but I am really appreciating this deep dive back into the Plantagenet rivalry. I have missed this world. I Like, getting back into these characters, getting to know all of the the big players through Jaquetta's eyes, it's like, oh my god, it was just so fun seeing, like, characters that I have connected with in later books, um, and tracing it back, right, um, and I really do love how Gregory connects the Cousins War series with her Tudor series, because obviously they just kind of flow into each other, and that's why I've decided to reread the entire series from beginning to end, including ones I have read before, I want to read it in the entire timeline um, that it was written in because uh, it really is magical how she weaves these things together. And short of giving spoilers, I like I just really don't know how else to say that. But so worth it. If you're a history nerd, if you're a Philippa Gregory fan, if you are interested in The Wars of the Roses, and if you are interested in books involving, um, I guess, magical... I can't think of the word right now, but if you're interested in books involving these magical types of women and showing it in a way that it probably was actually done back in the day, highly recommend Start With Lady of the Rivers, and thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. Uh, please like, share, subscribe if you are interested in following this journey through this series. I also share writing advice and talk about all kinds of books and things like that. So if any of that sounds interesting, please stick around. I'd love to see you to all my subscribers, all my new subscribers. Thank you all so much. I'll see y'all real soon.